time to bring in Mr. Gaddis Rose. And welcome back. We're really glad you could be here during our special anniversary week. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, an interesting story to, to sort of set the landscape 20 years ago when um, I had left uh, Silicon Valley, uh, retired up here, and I was running a users group for a boxed software technical analysis user group, which will go unnamed. And um, at the time, the box software had uh, over 100,000 users, and our user group here in Seattle was over 100 people. Um, and for those of you that have no idea what box software is, uh, you had to download your own data and manipulate your own data and correct your own data, and it was a pain in the in the derriere. Um, it's interesting that within that uh, uh, two years, that 90% of the group um, had migrated to StockCharts.com. So even 18, 19, 20 years ago, um, it it was a disruptive technology. Stock charts and, and chip brought brought to the market a, a really disruptive uh, technology, and it's been great ever since. It's been a great ride. I'm sort of looking back over the last uh, 20 years or so, I thought what I would bring to uh, share with you today is sort of the, the, the tools and a few little tricks that, that I feel are um, really powerful and everybody should uh, should look at them. So I, I'm just going to sort of breeze through a couple things. And, and um, one of them um, is seasonality. Um, for those of you that know me, you'll, you know, I'm a probability junkie. And so um, I'm going to start off with, I, I wrote a blog back in December, 2013. And, and I picked in that blog, the blog was called some seasonality goodies for you to unwrap. And this is my trader's journal blog. Um, I presented six stocks that had uh, alluring uh, seasonality attributes. And all I did was uh, track them for six weeks. And then I wrote another blog about them, how they had done. And um, we had these six had outperformed the market by 150%. So uh, take a look at the, uh, the blog I mentioned and uh, I'll present some other uh, stocks here so so you don't feel I'm sort of cherry picking. I, I just picked a few stocks out of the Dow. So these are 30 stocks, uh, not, I'm not presenting 30, but here are examples from uh, Dow stocks. Look at the seasonality here, um, and I picked five years. You know, with seasonality, you can do 10 years, 15 years, whatever uh, you like. But this is just straight statistical data. And you can see that BA has outperformed uh, 100% of the time over the last five years. It's been up in July and October. And some, some very nice uh, uh, gains, if you will. And uh, you'll see in August, it's, uh, it's never been up. Uh, the same with, uh, with Microsoft. You can see that uh, July and November are, have been historically very strong. June, very weak. The same with Coca-Cola. And th these are large companies. So to think that it's sort of counterintuitive to think that there's seasonality involved in, in these large companies. But you can really take advantage of, of this. There are trading systems out there that do. But um, the big advantage, I feel, is for portfolio rebalancing. Here, we're looking at a sector. And People would say, well, the sectors, that they probably don't have uh, much seasonality because they're so diversified. Well, here's XLF. Here's XLK. Look at the seasonality. So why not take advantage of, of those and buy in weak months, sell in strong months, um, your, put the probabilities uh, on your side. Anyway, so I challenge you to uh, take a look at uh, using seasonality. It's a wonderful indicator. Um, another thing that I'd like to talk to you about is th this is a chart list from our chart pack. Um, many people don't think of stockcharts.com as a source for economic fundamental data. I'm, I'm a big believer, and I, I know I've uh, been preaching for, for years something called rational analysis, where you combine the fundamentals and 
technical, so you get the best of both worlds. Here's an example of uh, a chart list that we have in our chart pack that looks at a lot of different um, fundamental data and allows you to, uh, and I want to want to make sure that the uh, listeners are aware that this is available. Um, this sort of data is available uh, on stock charts. For example, here's an example of uh, unemployment rate. And if you look at it, it's actually a leading indicator looking back to, to 2000 back here that the market continued to head up um, while unemployment here started to tick up. Back here as well, unemployment led the market continued to go higher. So when I see uh, downtrends like this um, in the unemployment rate, it, it makes me feel more comfortable sitting uh, in the market. Uh, this is the same sort of thing, industrial production. You can see that this is a long-term chart looking at 2000. So we had a little blip uh, here, but industrial production continues to look uh, very, very attractive. So from a fundamental standpoint, I'm, uh, I'm willing to uh, hang in there in the market. Um, this is another example of combining, again, what I'm calling rational analysis, combining the best of technicals and fundamentals. This is the S&P 500, and it's showing you the, uh, the actual composite, but it's showing you here this is the PE, and you can see that the PE actually over uh, quite a long time has been declining. Well, why is it de declining? Clearly, because earnings have not only continued to accelerate um, and trend up, but have been very, very, very strong. So I would suggest to uh, submit to you that take a, a look at a long-term chart of this, and, and you'll see that uh, the, the market is really driven by earnings. And so you can, um, you can feel sort of rest assured um, using that fundamental data to sort of hang in there. This is another example of down below, we have fundamental data such as dividends. This is a mutual fund. Um, I've owned this for a long time. My point here is when you plot the dividends, you can see that T. Rowe Price pays out capital gains every December 15th or so. My point is do not buy a mutual fund on December 10th, just before they're going to pay out um, distributions and capital gains. So here's the some examples that I had for you about using uh, combining technicals with fundamentals. Um, the other part that I, I look at this every day, this is the, uh, the predefined scans on, uh, on stock charts. And I use it a little bit differently than, than many people. I, I find this to be a breadth indicator. Looking at 52 week highs, looking at how many strong gainers, uh, even down here, looking at improving uh, check and money flow. Those are looking for uh, hot stocks as well. Um, I, I find that to be a very powerful breadth indicator. Build my intuition. If I scroll down here, these point and figure patterns are absolutely fabulous and i like to look at things like for example here we see that there are 26 nyse stock and uh, 10 and, and 26 nyse 10 nasdaq stocks that are breaking out from a triple top breakout or looking at something like a quadruple top breakout so what you get there are stocks that look like this they're you can see here that it tried to make a new high, pull back, tried to make a new high again, went through, then pull back, consolidated here. Now it's making a, a true high. And this is a big, a major stock because this is, this is Hershey. These are the kinds of stocks that you would find in those uh, breakouts. You can see uh, Kimberly Clark. It's been going sideways here in a range and it breaks out very nicely you can see look down below you can see on balance volume again uh supporting that uh that move also um here's a realty equity company you can see how this scanning engine produced this and had me start looking at it sideways pull back 
look at the uh, on balance volume as well looks looks very attractive. So I, I would really encourage you to, I know some of you want to write custom scans, that's perfectly fine, but um, don't ignore the predefined scans. They're very, very powerful. Here's another one, Grace Company. You can see the same thing went sideways, had a, a, a pullback, and now it's broken out into, uh, into a new high. And that's those scanning engines are where, where you can get um, these stocks. Um, another tool which I think is often overlooked by many users uh, is the, uh, the perf chart. And there are a couple of ways to do this. I'm going to use this as, as an example of looking at healthcare. So what I've done here is I have two indexes, the S&P and the Dow, and then I have two ETFs, um, and then I have two mutual funds. So what I'm looking for here is, is healthcare worthy of sort of a long-term investment? That's one question, and that's answered very clearly because you have both mutual funds and both uh, healthcare above, you, you see here, these are your, uh, your S&P index and your Dow. The second question I want to answer is, these are both ETFs. Well, are can I find mutual funds, and these are two, uh, T. Rowe Price and a Janus mutual fund, that outperform not just the market, but outperform the ETFs. In other words, I'm willing to pay these guys their fees because they're, they're clearly worth their money. So you'll see a little bit more of this later, but that's one way to use, use a perf chart. Um, another way, this is a blog that I wrote uh, last year and what was interesting, I hold, uh, I have 20 asset classes that I invest in. One of them, I invest directly large cap stocks. I buy Visa and Microsoft and Amazon and that, that sort of thing. But um, on the other 19, uh, it was interesting to, uh, I maintain these charts called best of breed charts where um, I'm looking at, uh, I load on them. Green is always VTI, which is my, uh, the Vanguard total stock market index. That's what I'm, that's my bogey. The black line is uh, whatever here is at the top. So this is JKG is a mid cap ETF. And then you have a number you can see here. These are a number of other options, whether ETFs or mutual funds. And um, then you have this orange line, which happens to be the prime cap. Um, Odyssey aggressive growth mid cap fund. So I maintain this chart for mid caps. So I'm looking when people come to me, let's say in, in, in one of my classes and say, have you looked at this ETF or have you looked at this mutual fund? I can very quickly throw it on the chart, compare it to the market. And you can see I've, I've owned prime cap for a long time. Why? Because it outperforms the market. It outperforms the ETFs. And I choose to do mid caps using this mutual fund. That's not true in every one of the other asset classes um, is biotech for me. Well, I've done the same thing, loading the best mutual funds, loading Vanguard, um, VTI on there and XBI, which is the black line, which is my choice of investing in biotech is an ETF. It's a basket of ETFs. So you can see here, these are what I call best of breed uh, charts. Here again, this is uh, your sort of allocation fund that has stocks and, um, and bonds. And you can see where the market is. You can see what the sister options are. And I've owned T. Rowe Price for a very long time. Why? Because it outperforms. So I'm willing to pay them their, their fees. Here's another example in the emerging markets, my preference is IEMG, which is an ETF. So the point of this blog was simply that 50% of my asset classes are ETFs, the other 50% are um, mutual funds, but you need to make that decision uh, yourself. Here's just another uh, focus on, on that particular chart that I showed you in, in the blog. And I maintain these so I can, uh, I update them regularly. Um, anyway, we're moving on now to another thing I would like to show you. Um, this is uh, an 
a chart, obviously, of all the sectors. And in this case, we're we're looking at it over the last 50 days arbitrarily. Um, technology is is clearly outperforming. So if we if we go to uh, the uh, the homepage, this is this is a free tool. This blows me away because it's a free tool. We know now we're we're looking at let's say one month. So we look at one month and we can see that the technology is the most attractive. So let's click on technology. Then we see all the industry groups that make up the technology sector. We see computer hardware. Well, let's click on computer hardware. We see all the top stocks in that industry group under the sector of technology. So we click on um, IntelliCheck. And we see that it's a very strong breaking out chart. Now, follow this along. If you, under chart styles, if you pull down my name and you'll get automatically, you'll get this pre-formatted chart. It's, it comes up very easy. So here you've now gotten a stock which is outperforming the market because it's relative to BTI. It's in the strongest sector, you see, because it's a technology sector. And you can see that the industry group within the technology sector is starting to perform nicely and trend up. And now you've got the strongest stock in the strongest industry, in an uptrending, in the strongest sector, so it's all easily on one chart and then below you can you see on balance volume as well so uh this is a, a very powerful tool i feel and stock charts has made it very easy to uh to do that as i mentioned you, you could see you just click uh click through it on the flip side this was a blog i wrote uh, and I, I i did a whole series of these practice i call them action practice where i give you a um, a challenge one week and then a couple weeks later. But you can see that the same thing works on the sell side. Here we have uh, Coeur d'Alene and you can see that it starts to underperform the market. The sector is starting to fade. The industry group is starting to fade and Coeur d'Alene, which, which had been a very, very strong stock, starts to uh, underperform its brothers and sisters. So um, when all of those four align, it's sort of a reasonable time to take money off the table. So it works on the other side of the, on the sell side as well. Here's dry ships. You can see it starts to underperform the market. It starts the, the sectors fading here. Um, the industry group is flattened out and then uh, dry ships itself is underperforming its brothers and sisters. Um, ironically enough, you've got a triple top going on there too. So the same thing with first solar. GNC, but my point is you can go and, and look at that blog uh, yourself and, and see that it actually, uh, it does work on this relative strength approach, works um, on, the, uh, on the sell side as well. Um, if you had uh, used this approach on uh, GE, for example, um, you would have gotten out uh, very nicely. Uh, here's a long term, long term, a couple of years, three years. And you can see there were a lot of warnings, even as GE was making higher highs, you can see it was starting to underperform the market. Its sector was going, trending down here. And then its industry group was trending down and it was flat. So it, it really does work on, uh, on both sides, on the buy and the, the sell side. Um, Another trick or tool, if you will, that, that I think is the closest thing we have to the Holy Grail is something that Joe Grantville invented it um, using it on balance volume, used it for end of day data. In other words, he would say that um, if the market was up, he would take all that volume and put, put it in the bucket, so to speak, in this, uh, think of this as a bucket on balance volume. And then in the next day, uh, if 
the market was down, he would take all that volume out of the bucket. So the, the bucket was either rising or falling based upon the amount of volume that was going into it. Chaikin came along and, and refined that a bit. Um, but my point here is now that we have one minute volume available to us, uh, it, uh, and it's free. I just can't believe this. Here's an example of how, how that works, that we have a situation here, audio codes, and you can see that it's, it's going, um, as it goes up here, on balance volume is showing that it's under accumulation. It has a pullback, but on balance volume doesn't show distribution. Then it starts to head up and it, it uh, uh, very clearly is under serious accumulation. And this is, believe it or not, um, this is one minute data here, all compressed. The most that you can put on uh, stock charts is 20 days. In this case, I put on uh, 12. But uh, I would really encourage you to uh, play play with this uh, one minute data because it's just uh, it's it's truly truly a wonderful uh, a wonderful tool. Here's another example where we have a stock that's going sideways and but is still you can see very clearly it's being accumulated here, obviously being accumulated. And then you have this big pullback, but you don't have a lot of distribution. And then once again, you've got this confirmation going on with uh, the one minute uh, data. So I, as I say, I, I use this on one of my screens um, when I'm actively buying and selling and I'm looking just at uh, one day at a time. It's very, very, uh, very powerful. Um, I've saved these all, so I have to find my spot again where I am with uh, with the particular charts. Here's an example of a chart where it's almost like having x-ray vision. The price is going up, 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 but notice what's happening on the on-balance volume. This is being distributed. So Mr. Fidelity or Mr. Market, as Wyckoff would say, or the composite operator here, is actually distributing stock, not accumulating stock. Another example here is a stock, um, VUZI. You can see here that it's going sideways price-wise, but on balance volume says, no, no, it's being distributed. And so down she goes. I would really encourage you to, uh, to look at this. I, I wish I could pull up Facebook uh, unfortunately, they don't archive these things uh, back very far. But when Facebook was hitting a new high, um, it was uh, it, it was shocking to see that it was actually being distributed. So as Facebook was making a new high back there in in July, um, the on balance volume was showing no, no, no. It's actually uh, being distributed. So it's uh, it, it's a very powerful tool. So I just wanted to share a couple of those things that sort of my favorites from sort of 20 years greatest hits. Um, I know I went very quickly, but uh, I didn't want to run over time. Um, yeah, uh, Gaddis. Yes, sir. First of all, um, I'm a huge proponent of seasonality. and I know you started off with seasonality, so I really enjoyed that. I don't know if you had looked at um, – couple of stocks one uh, being um, booking holdings BKNG and on the seasonality and you can see the seasonality button is right at the very bottom so um, Tom home run if you could if you could stretch that chart back if you can grab that slider and go back 20 years from five yeah, and what I was looking at, one of the things I always find very interesting about this chart is look at the performance of booking in the first four or five months of the year in terms of their average return. I mean, it is unbelievable heading into spring. And then if you look at the rest of the year, it basically is flat if you combine all the rest of the years. And you can see on a percentage basis, February, March, and April tend to go up most years, 80% February, 75% March and April. And when you come, just look at that and compare it to the rest of the chart, it is 
you know, really unbelievable. Now they did come out this year and uh, earlier this year, and I think they missed on their earnings. So that they had a, a rough start, or at least in February, they had a, a really tough time at the end of the month. But they're starting to come back. And I noticed today it was trading at about a six week high. And this is a stock that tends to do very well this time of the year. Uh, as you can see there on the last five years, you pulled up uh, in April. It's been up each of the last five years. We're in April and it's making a breakout. I think some of the seasonality information is overlooked here. I think it's a powerful tool at stock charts. The, the checks, the checks in the mail, Tom. Um, <laughs> this, this is a probability enhancement that everybody should be looking at. Um, as I say, I know for a fact there are algorithmic trading programs based on this back in, in New York. This is a freebie, guys. This just puts the probabilities. And, and from a portfolio rebalancing standpoint, why would you not um, sell, for example, if, you're, if you have too much of it, this has grown too much, why not sell it in, in March and April? And if you're replacing it with something else that has seasonality, why not buy that on, on weakness? So you're selling into strength and buying on weakness from a portfolio management rebalancing standpoint. It's just a very, very powerful tool. Uh, it, I, I can't uh, speak highly enough about that. But um, So yes, thank you, Tom, for that, uh, that comment. I had one, one last little section. I... I feel very, very. Um, I feel very strongly that a big part of being a successful investor is is just your organization, and so uh, in this case, what why not, what I'm actually using uh, is an old uh, uh, chart pack that uh, a layout to show you a, a, an old chart pack that we have here. But organization is sort of the big picture, the roadmap that you follow, and your your routines or these checklists. There, it's sort of an inventory. These chart lists are sort of an, uh, an inventory of your the program, the agenda that you're going to follow, and so that you can replicate consistently. You're not a bumper card that's sort of bumping across the entire market. That when you win, you understand why you won, and you've got an organizational approach to do that. And be the the fourth leg is is sort of having a. I, I love this old quote by the Dalai Lama that said. A disciplined mind leads to happiness, and an undisciplined mind leads to suffering. Uh, the cliche here is you got to do what you have to do before you can do what you want to do. And these stock charts offers you the ability to organize these chart lists in, in really fabulous ways. Um, whether you, uh, as I say, we have this, uh, Grace and I keep this up, this chart pack that you can download. but. Um, you can see that the, the top, there are a bunch of uh, permission to buy slides, which is really essential. There are a bunch of dashboard items. I showed you uh, some of those. There are all these different chart styles that we use. They're indexes. They're interest-sensitive stuff. There's a lot of focus here on sectors. And then we move into uh, using, we're big proponents of uh, using the Fidelity sector funds to help us understand what's happening in the the sector arena, um, and then uh, just looking at, for example, uh, here, looking at all the, the Dow industry groups. They're all downloaded, and, and you can sort them different ways. It's just a uh, organization is not to be um, sort of overlooked. So that was really the last of, of my points. I guess I had, uh, there's the stock chart store you can go and, and uh, dig into the chart pack if you're interested in and then uh have to pitch my book grace and i wrote this book that's been selling very nicely it's all all the 10 stages are there and then uh my last slide is um whenever grace and i teach a class or whatever we have our, our own website called stock market mastery and it talks about uh it has all the 10 stages for example from the book and describes it so it uh if, if you're interested feel free. And if, of course, always uh, the Trader's Journal, which uh, uh, comes out here is the, the 20th anniversary blog that's just talking about today's uh, today's show. So it, it was a pleasure to have you on here today. And thank you so much for being part of the special week with us. 
Uh, hopefully you're not going to wait for the 40th anniversary to come back and join us. Again. <laughs> no, I would, I would like to uh, book that now, please. Uh. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Gaddis, so much. Thanks for, thanks uh, for having uh, me. Thanks so much.